Hello, I'm Mikhail Dvorkin, a computer science teacher and 2007 ICPC gold medalist. In this video I'll show you some best practices of using Kotlin programming language in competitive programming. Since I have some experience in bioinformatics, I decided to solve problem D, circular DNA, from 2019 ICPC World Finals. Here is an IntelliJ IDEA window, and using their education tools, I show you the statement of that problem. We have a circular DNA with different gene markers that can be start or end markers of different gene types denoted by integers. And the question is to find the cut position that maximizes the number of gene types that form a balanced bracket sequence in the resulting linear DNA. For example, if we do this cut, then gene type 1 gives us the sequence start, start, end, start, end, end, which is indeed a balanced bracket sequence, and it's good, and the gene type 2 gives us a sequence end, start, which is not balanced and the gene type 42 gives us the sequence end, which is even more awful. So the score is 1 if we make a cut in this position, and we need to find the best score over all cutting positions. The solution to this problem is to iterate over the entire circular DNA, and for each gene type to calculate the balance of this gene type, as well as the minimum balance that we have seen during this iteration. Having done that, we can disregard forever the gene types that have non-zero balance in the end, for example, gene type 42 in this example, and we can calculate the score that we would have if we would make a cut in the zero position. That is the, the number of genes that indeed form a balanced bracket sequence after we make a cut in position zero. Now we have to learn how to calculate the new score value when we move the current cutting position one unit clockwise. If we do it quickly enough, then we will receive the array of different score values for all cutting positions, and we will we'll just output the best one of them. Let's start coding. Let's start by parsing the input. The first line of input can be disregarded because it's extractable from the second line, and the second line can be read, and it's not null because the jury promises me that, and I can split it by a space character and transform each token to a pair of pieces of information. The first one is whether it was a start marker or not, and the second one is received by omitting the first letter and casting the resulting part to an integer. Now I can iterate over the entire array, and the singular form datum is fun, but I'd rather use more verbose variables right here. So I am ready to calculate the balance of the gene, and to store it I need an integer array of balances of the size that is large enough to store all possible IDs. Okay, I hate such code in competitive programming, so let me rather iterate over all the IDs that I see in the input and take the maximum of them, which is not null, I'm sure about that, and increase it by one, so that's a more elegant size of the array. Now let me calculate the balance of the gene, which is increased by one if it was a start marker and decreased by one otherwise. Also, I want to store the minimal balance ever seen for each gene, which is a similar integer array of the same size. And the new value of minimal balance ever seen is easy to calculate inside the for loop. Well, after this for loop, I can find out the set of gene types that are possible to be used towards the score calculation at all. So these are the genes that are present in the input and that have a zero balance after the entire for loop. Well, let me extract the variable with all the gene types ever present in the input, and to make the code fast and same style as the other arrays, let me introduce a boolean array that will store whether this gene is possible to be used, and I will iterate over all the genes present in the uh, given array, 
and if this gene has a zero balance at this code point I will put a true flag into the boolean array. Now I'm ready to calculate the score that we would receive if we would cut at the zero cutting position. That is the number of genes that are okay with such cut, which is the number of genes present in the input and that have minimal balance overall equal to zero at this code point because otherwise if this minimal balance would be negative their sequences would not be balanced, right? Now I'm ready for the second iteration over the entire circular DNA and I could have done it by copying and pasting the for loop code but of course I hate such approach. I could have repeated the code two times but it would be an imperative approach whereas I'd rather show you the functional one. So let me extract this code as a function and execute it once initially and the other time after I know the score at the zero cutting position. So this code will calculate a lot of scores for all cutting positions. To do that it wants to know the score at the zero cutting position. Let me introduce this parameter. In the second execution it will be the at zero variable and in the first execution and I can pass any gibberish because I will ignore the resulting scores anyways. Now inside the for loop during the second execution I want to recalculate the new score value when I move the cutting position one unit clockwise. In order to do that, let me find out the impact that this specific gene had before this move. Uh, it's either 0 or 1, and it's a 1 if this gene is possible to be used at all, and if it was fine with this cutting position, which is its balance over here is equal to its minimal balance ever seen. Now, very soon I will use this same code to calculate its impact after the move. And you know me, and I don't like this duplicate code, so let me rather extract this calculation to a function. Much nicer, right? And also I see that uh, the calculation of the score in the zero cutting position can be reformulated using this function as well, because all we need is to calculate the number of genes that are present in the input and that do give the impact equal to one in the current code point. Now I want to calculate the new value each time by subtracting the previous impact and adding the new one. Hmm, it looks like some array of prefix sums. So let me use my beloved scan function over the data array. Well, the scan function is still experimental, so I need an annotation in front of my code. And it needs an initial value for the accumulator which is given to us in the parameter of the function and we need to implement a procedure of calculating the new accumulator based on previous accumulator and the current element which is not hard to implement in our case moreover we don't need the local variable over here so the result of the scan function is the array of all the scores for all possible cut positions and that's exactly what I want to return from my function. Let me fix the resulting type and now I see that my function has only one return statement so I can use the ID tooling to convert it to an expression body. Now the second execution of my function returns the desired array of scores among which I want to find the maximal one but the jury also wants me to find the index of this maximum. So I take this data with indices and among such pair I find the maximum using the criterion just the value, not the index. I remember that this function will return the leftmost maximum, which is exactly what is needed in this problem. Now I know that this result is not null because the array wasn't empty, so all I have to do is to output this answer, not forgetting that we used the one indexing in the problem statement. 
let us run the local tests and since they pass let us submit Ta -da! thank you for your attention use Kotlin have fun and good luck <laughs>